Hello! In this video, we'll explore running the new Falcon 3 models from TII. We will use Hugging Face to access the model weights, and we'll run everything using VLLM, which is considered the gold standard for inference. Our setup will use a dockerized BLLM instance. Let's begin by visiting the Hugging Face website to look at the new Falcon models. For this demonstration, we will work with the 10 billion parameter instruct model. Since this is considered a relatively small model, we may be able to run it using just a CPU-based Docker runtime. However, there is one important detail to note. The default Docker file is designed for GPU usage with NVIDIA CUDA libraries, so we'll need to specifically create a CPU version of the Docker file for VLLM. To start the process, you can use any terminal or IDE you prefer. We'll first clone the repository using git, and then build our Docker image. While the Docker build is running, we should think carefully about where we want to run the system. On this current terminal, we have approximately 16 gigabytes of memory available. While this might be sufficient, it would be better to have a dedicated service for running our VLLM Docker container. There are many options available for hosting this service, but today we'll focus on using Cloud Run. Cloud Run is a straightforward solution for running Docker containers in a serverless environment on Google Cloud Platform. It offers both good performance and cost effectiveness. While in a production environment, you would likely want to use infrastructure as code tools like Terraform to set up your Cloud Run Falcon 3 API service, for this demonstration, we'll work directly in the Google Cloud Console. Since our Docker build is still in progress, let's use this time efficiently and set up an artifact registry on Google Cloud. The artifact registry allows us to build and store Docker images privately. It's similar to Docker Hub, but typically comes with a free tier on Google Cloud. We'll create a new repository, selecting the type as Docker, and choosing a region such as US Central 1. For those familiar with AWS, the equivalent services would be AWS Elastic Container Registry for storing Docker images and AWS Fargate for running containers, but today we'll stick with the Google Cloud Platform services. Once our Docker image finishes building, our next step will be to re-tag it to work with our new artifact registry and then push the container to that registry.
After pushing the image and refreshing our Docker repository view, we'll see our new image ready for use. This brings us to the exciting part, deploying our Falcon 3 model on Cloud Run. When we look at the Docker documentation for VLLM, we'll notice various configuration options. Most of these are optimizations that we don't necessarily need for our purposes. We mainly need to provide our image and specify which model we want to use. You could also think about persisting the model cache in a Cloud Run volume to improve downloads, but let's keep things as simple as possible. We'll navigate to Cloud Run in the Google Cloud Console and start deploying a new service using our image. For testing purposes, we'll configure the service to allow unauthenticated invocations. We'll also set the minimum number of instances to 1, which helps reduce cold starts. Cold starts are important to avoid because they can result in very slow container boot times and model downloads, which would make the response time unacceptably long. We'll need to provide our model name, which we can copy from Hugging Face. One crucial configuration step is setting the CPU and memory allocation for our service. Since we're trying a 10 billion parameter model, it's recommended to set a generous memory limit for better performance. We'll allocate 32 gigabytes of memory to ensure efficient handling of the model. As a final configuration step, we'll set the minimum instances to 1 for revision scaling. However, after deploying and waiting for some time, it becomes apparent that something isn't working correctly with our deployment. Looking at the logs, we can see that our startup probe is failing. The container appears to be stuck in a startup loop. It keeps restarting without ever completing the startup process, not giving itself enough time to fully initialize. While most of the other logs show normal info and warning messages, this startup issue needs to be addressed. When we try to edit the revision to give it more startup time, we discover that the maximum timeout is limited to 240 seconds, and we can't extend it beyond that. However, we can modify the initial delay setting. Let's adjust it to give the service four minutes before it starts performing health checks and deploy this updated configuration. After making these adjustments, we'll want to monitor the logs closely to see if we're making progress with the deployment. We need to keep in mind that this is a large model that requires both downloading and initialization time. When we review the recent logs, we can see that we've progressed to the download stage. This is good news, but we're encountering a new issue. The download is being terminated because the boot process is taking too long. Specifically, at around the 34 minute time, the container shuts down, which interrupts our download process. This suggests we're getting closer to a solution, so let's try one more adjustment to our probe configuration. We'll increase the failure threshold this time. By setting it to five failures, we're effectively giving the system 20 minutes of health checking before it decides to mark it as failed and restart the container. Let's deploy this modified configuration and see if our third attempt proves successful. To better understand what's happening with our third attempt, we'll use the Logs Explorer, which has a helpful feature that lets us filter by specific revision. When we select this option and navigate to the resource, we can see that revision 2 had errors, and we're now working with revision 3. We'll filter to show only the matching entries for our latest revision to identify exactly where the process is getting stuck. As we scroll through the logs, we notice a pattern. There's one failed startup probe occurring approximately every few minutes. The system isn't making multiple health check attempts because the container isn't starting quickly enough. To understand this better, it's important to know that there are actually two separate checks happening. 
First, checking if the container is running, and second, checking if the application inside the container is running. In our case, we're not even getting past the first check. The container itself isn't starting within the allowed time frame. At this point, it makes sense to consider a simpler approach. Instead of continuing to troubleshoot the larger model, let's try using a smaller version, specifically the 3 billion parameter instruct model. This proves to be a good decision as our fourth attempt shows success. Now we can demonstrate how to use this revision through API calls. Since we configured our API to allow unauthenticated invocations, all we need is the URL to send our prompts in JSON format. However, when we first try to use the model, we encounter a timeout error. Fortunately, this is a straightforward issue to resolve. We'll edit our revision one more time and increase the HTTP request timeout setting to a much higher value. This change ensures we have sufficient time to run inference on our newly deployed model. Once this new revision goes live, we can retry our story completion test. This time, the results are much better. The model responds quickly and provides a substantial completion output. We've now successfully set up a working Falcon 3 instance. There are some important lessons to take away from this process. First, startup timeouts can be a significant challenge when using Cloud Run for this type of deployment. If this presents an ongoing issue, you might want to explore alternative services that allow longer startup durations. Additionally, if you need faster inference speeds, you might want to consider using GPU resources. In that case, you would need to use a VLLM container specifically designed for GPU operation. If you'd like to support the channel, consider starting a free trial of our new design tool, which is linked in the description, and let us know what you think. We'll include the diagram file in the description as well. Thank you very much for watching to the end and please enjoy it responsibly.